doing yeah. because they're an LSPL team that could just team fight. Well, speaking of LSPL teams, of course, Newbie formerly uh, QG. V there towards the top side of the map. Swift, Dade, Happy Y. Of course, Peko and more down there towards the bottom lane as well. Reunited as Uzi did leave the roster. And Doinby as well made his exit. And look, Dade stepping in. Happy coming back in as well. This is a team that I used to playing with one another, apart from maybe Dade there, but they had been practicing a little bit beforehand. Yeah. Of course, wanted him for the semi-final against EDG, but couldn't quite get him in there. That's right. And this yeah. is a team that has looked dominant if the game goes late enough. Yeah. Well, they're the LSPL team that we just likened them towards as well. They're a team fight team in particular, yeah. which is converse to that of Snake. You get these guys into a situation where they get a favorable engage, not even gold lead, they will take it to you and they will actually win that team fight. And time and again, we have seen them do it from 10,000 gold behind, if not more. Yeah. And this is Dade as well, still playing exactly like Dade does. Doesn't necessarily go off in a laning phase, can sort of take it to his opponent sometimes, but that's not where he wants to win the game. This guy is like some sort of, I don't know, conductor of team fights. I will say that that could almost be a detriment to their team because Doinby did want to win his lane and get yeah. it going. That's a very good point. We are going to have a look over the other side of the rift, though, and this is a team that we were just talking oh, about, wow. Snake. SOFM is going to be subbing in today in the jungle. We did hear about him, as Crystal is also going to be subbing out in favor of Martin there in the AD carry position. So a bit of a change up for Snake, maybe the breath of fresh air that they're looking for in order to change things. But you did mention that ZZR was stepping up for Snake. Yeah. Swapping him out, it's probably the worst idea. I think that Snake are just having an existential crisis and they don't know what good looks like for them anymore. I will say that SOFM is a superstar jungler that we oh, have yeah. yet to see show his hand and that's because he's new. It was yeah. similar to what Uzi was in Newbie last split. Don't play him until you think he's ready. And then when you think the time is right, put him in that roster so that he can seamlessly transition. Well, they think now is the right time because they keep losing games and they need something to reinvigorate them. Well, they actually look really invigorated there at their computers. You can see lots of smiles on the faces of these players. Tank especially there in the mid, mid lane having a bit of a grin. And look, as a team that plays to the ceiling of Tank, Definitely a good thing if he's feeling good heading into this match. That's right. SOFM actually with Tank and Martin. Yeah. Martin being the different AD carries. This is going to be a very curious thing to see. Ella as well not being in the scene anymore. We've got oh, Jay-Z in there or Jetsaw, whichever yeah. way you like. To, I don't know. Jay-Z is just so much easier. We're, we're just locking this is a big question mark on the team of Snake. Is Are they actually going to be able to perform with these new members in the yeah. roster, in the starting roster for this team? Or is it just an excuse to try something different based off their current performance? Because you can do it early, see if it works, and if it doesn't, just revert back to comfort. Yeah, it's a really good point. And we don't actually know what this is going to change for the identity of Snake as well. Moving SOFM into the jungle, switching out Martin uh, instead of uh, Crystal there as well. So it's all about what the, like you said, existential crisis. Well, what's going to happen when they come out at the end of it? And we may find out here as we hop into Champion Select. Echo going to be the first ban as Flandre just seems to get attention as far as that ban list is concerned. Of course, the standard red side ban of the Rise is going to be taken away on the side of Snake. And we'll just see how this one shakes out as Fizz is going to go as well. He's getting all the focus. Yeah, speaking of attention, Flandre is getting all of it at the moment. Fizz very strong in the current patch. You would say does quite well into Vladimir as an example, having the Grievous Wounds ingrained in his kit, which perhaps means maybe we'd be looking towards it. We know that V is a strong hybrid tank damage dealer. Yeah, plays a decent Swain there as well. Already saw that. And you would think that Vladimir is another person that he can add to that list. Absolutely run havoc with. Most certainly. And the final band to come in from Newbie, some Sort of classic omissions from this ban list has been the Kindred, the Nidalee, things like that. Of course, Azir, something worth looking at. And the Lissandra has been a constant takeaway from Tank, as we've been seeing. But it's another top laner that is going to be taken away as the Trundle hits the bench. Nidalee going to be banned. Snake wants a Kindred first pick from Nubi. Yeah. 
Which is Italy. weird. No, no, it's, it's actually not bad at all, right? right. If you force right. the Kindred first pick and you go for something like the Vladimir Lucian in response, it's actually not that bad because you're choosing which power picks you want. You're also bottlenecking them into saying there's probably one really strong jungler remaining. The rest are good, yeah. but there's only one S tier remaining. You pick that one up. If you don't pick that one up, we're 100% just going to take it and get something strong with it. Is it dangerous, though, giving Kindred to a player like Swift? who actually topped damage as a jungler. Oh, yeah, no, massively dangerous. I'm not advising this by any means. <laughs> but, but that's you, we the decision understand they've the strategy. made. Yeah, that's their choice, and they're welcome to their choice. Well, SOFM currently cycling some champions, but something like a Vladimir, something like a Lucian would make a lot of sense here. And Rusty, the Prophet himself, seems to have already given it away to Snake as they're hovering those exact two options. It would make a lot of sense for them to lock it in. Kindred's quite good into these champions, though. So remember, low range Vladimir, low range Lucian, you can actually just pop that Lamb's Respite and keep your carries alive. Not to mention the Hemo Plague being almost hard countered by Lamb's Respite. And you would imagine the response here from Newbie would go towards the Azir that you brought up before. Perhaps the Bard if they want to lock the support in, or the Karma to deny that from Snake. At the moment, it is Dade looking at the Golden Chicken. Tank probably wants to play Lissandra anyway, so just doesn't really care all that much about the Azir being looked at for now. No, but we also don't know where that Vladimir is going. Yeah, good point. You could very easily swap over to Victor instead of the Azir if you wanted to. We've seen Victor as a common matchup in the middle lane against it. It holds its own sometimes. Yep. Other times you get Dove at level four. So that was an interesting story. one. Could have been a bad news story. Exactly right. But a few switch arounds here. Coming in for Newbie. They're looking confident. Should at be the calm. Yeah. Yeah, that, this makes a lot more sense. There's more going to be taking that one towards the bottom side. Yep, so they lock in that karma for themselves. I think it's mostly, as we mentioned, it was even hovered by Snake, more of a denial tool. Yeah. So you do have to make the immediate assumption that Bard can be picked up from the flip side. These two champions, man, Bard and Karma are actually just like top tier supports at the moment. A lot of capabilities to enable the rest of their team. Bard more of the engage option. Karma saying that you guys engage, I'll speed you up option. <laughs> I like it. But Martin, is it going to take away the graves here for SOFM? So is it going to stay with the carry style junglers? They move into this one. I was hoping for something like a potential Elise, something like that. I think Graves is actually good because they've gone for the Maokai with it. So they've revealed the Vladimir being middle lane. Tank's going to be locking that one. And now they've got reliable crowd control from Flandre in the top lane, which means that SOFM can afford to be this damage dealer. So get it going for his team. Yeah, as we do have the Siva being looked at as well. Invaluable is what... Flandre will be on this Maokai if they do lock in all of this AoE damage that's going to be coming out from Newbie. His team comp looks terrifying at the moment. Yeah, Snake have set themselves up well without even rounding it out, missing their support option. That's a very curious last pick. Means they were definitely trying to deny picks away from Newbie. Still a strong comp in their own right. Yeah. So the Siva and the Fiora are going to be locked in. So V with a split pushing option, maybe something that he feels can go toe to toe with the Vladimir. Yeah, knowing that it's a Siva, you would actually imagine Bard could be looked at here. I don't think there's too much purpose in any other support. Of course, there's always merit in tanks, but Brad's just the best. Brad is the best. And of course, you're probably talking about that because the Karma then is again, already sitting there. Yeah, well, Karma's already locked in. Then again, Jay-Z is, uh, is just a Thresh God. If you oh, really yeah. wanted to, you could look at that. More of an engage tool there as well. Probably could be a good idea. Speaking During of level engage one tool, power, though. though. Yeah, exactly right. And the Braum is going to be taken away. So Jay-Z is going to be bringing Bra Braum towards the bottom side. Martin. Of course, if you compare Martin and Crystal as far as AD carry players are concerned, Crystal, a little bit more unpredictable. Martin often just did his job and did it okay. Yeah, I'd say much more facilitating is yeah. the way that Martin works as an AD carry. Just plays his part, fills the role that is required of an AD carry in the team. Crystal, though, became a lot more experienced and 
so, sort of settled in his own right as a very strong, reliable AD carry towards the end of the last splits. So of course, had a lot of uh, Crystal-esque moments, especially as we moved into this split, but all things considered, Martin's got that Lucian. He's set up well. He most certainly is, and we'll see whether he's going to be able to have a dominant performance on a coveted champion in that Lucian. Of course, yeah. not quite changed. Piercing Light taking a little bit of a hit in the next patch, but not happened just yet. We have to remember that this whole drop started by Snake giving them the Kindred and running that risk. It's now Kindred as Zir as well as the team composition, which works immaculately together. Yeah. The zone control that Newbie have is unbelievable. There are a lot of circles on that team. Yeah, so coaches are going to shake, shake hands. We'll see whether Snake can throw them off or whether Newbie's comp is going to be able to do it as we hop into game. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a pause to start things off here in this series. As you can see, Pekko on your screen right now for Newbie. Having a bit of a smile. Still, spirits are high Yeah. as we head into this one. But look, we've seen the team comps already. I'm looking at Newbie's one and I'm thinking like, yes, very, very scary. But the fact that they don't have like a dedicated tank, is that going to be some sort of a problem here? The lack of dedicated tank, usually you'd look at it and be like, yeah, it could be a potential problem. Absolutely. But they've got a kindred, so it kind of compensates for that. Mm -hmm. The same thing is like if you look at Snake's comp, it's like maybe they don't have enough crowd control, but they've got a Braum. So it compensates for that by giving everybody a stun technically. So yeah, like they don't have a tank. If Kindred gets caught out of position or dies before the fight starts, if, if Snake catch the Kindred, then yeah. it could be a real issue, 100%. But if this Kindred plays like we saw Dandy did yesterday for Vici, it's going to be great. Everyone's a tank. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. And Dandy played out of his mind yesterday as well on that Kindred. That's why I was thinking, like, as soon as that first pick was given over, obviously intentionally out of Snake. This is something that they orchestrated themselves. But it's so, so dangerous giving that to Swift because yeah. he's so good at that champion. And you get any yeah. sort of early advantage to Swift, it just alleviates all of that pressure from the rest of the map, mm -hmm. especially in that mid lane where Dade just wants to chill, farm things up, get himself to the point where he can just own these team fights and be that man that's able to carry things out in the lake. And that's what the whole comp looks like it's going to be from Newbie, right? They've got that middle laner that's going to farm. And they've actually got the bottom lane that it's going to... Ex explode basically but yep. double uh, speed boosts as well with the ultimates we've got the kindred to actually keep alive and healthy and everyone's a tank even though nobody is well we are onto the rift ladies and gentlemen the pause is over and we're into game number one between snake and newbie tank already setting up here and we'll see exactly how he's gonna go because i have a feeling it's gonna be shaped rather effectively by how this man does in the mid lane and boots start for tank Cute. on this vladimir it's not a darn shield, so he will be taking a lot more damage, but has extra potions, obviously. Actually, had it straight down it. Um, the defensive tree there as well. Picked up Strength of the Ages in the mid lane. Yeah, uh, a couple of Vladimirs we have seen do this now. I think it's actually the preferenced Keystone Mastery. It kind of helps if you're going to go Boots to be a little bit tankier, definitely. I like it. And it means that you're going to get a lot of health. And Vladimir, health, ability, power, those two things come hand in hand. Yep, generally known to be a bit of a fan. It is known. But I just like Death by a Touch. Just in general. On Vladimir? Or just, just, you just like this? In, in general and on Vladimir. Just because I feel like getting all of that extra late game damage with all the consistent damage that he does put down is important. Nah. But I'm not the analyst. That's you. So we'll go with your choice. Strength of the Ages is the best. All right. Nailed it. So, Tank. Smartest choice there in the mid lane. This is an aggressive start. Yeah. And Yubi just trying to take away the little Sentinels here. Are going to do so effectively here as well. But as Snake are ready. Oh, this is cheeky. So Siva has Q leveled. No spell shield. And here we go. Yeah, there's the Winter's Bite. He's going to get stunned. The Flash came out of Happy, but I have a feeling he's going to be dead. First Blood goes down as the Ignite's going to tick through. And more might be in trouble as well. He's going to get stunned one more time. Piercing Light comes down. Oh, the Double Tap's not there. But the Double Flash comes in and they're both dead. Snake 
off to a roaring start. And an actual disaster just strikes the bottom lane of Newbie. There is no way that they're going to be able to fight a 2v2 anytime soon. It's both members of Snake in the bottom lane are one zero one, one And now Dade is potentially in trouble. Yeah, red buff already here oh for SOFM. God. Flashes away immediately, but SOFM's there. Three kills, two and a half minutes. But what a disaster. <laughs> Okay. Snake. Identity crisis over, Rusty. <laughs> I think they found what they want to do. And that's just be mad aggressive. They get a lot of early kills. That's a big gold advantage about to be forged out of thin air from just raw proactivity. And so FM getting that early red buff gank on. And Swift kind of just left to clear minions going, what has happened to my team? <laughs> Jeez, that is... Just out of control. SOFM is now going to be able to pick up his blue buff. A bit upset that the Sentinels got taken, but probably going to be okay with it. If you want to consider it a trade. Yeah. I'd lose two blue sentries for a kill any day of the week. There's actually going to be Lucidity Boots already done here for Tank as well, so lots of movement speed out of this Vladimir. I actually really like that pickup against the Nazir. Yeah, it's not a bad pickup. Remembering running uh, Ghost and Flash wants to have that mobility as well. Reduces the cooldown of summoner spells. Yeah. By having it there. Generally speaking, it would be an okay pickup. I don't think he needs Merc Treads. Doesn't really need Mobility Boots or, sorry, Boots of Swiftness, I should say. And Sork Shoes would be nice, but he chose the cooldown reduction to be more efficient early, given the lead that they have. Did Happy just get a crit on that Ricochet? Because that did so much damage to Martin. I don't think so. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, Swift looking to try and contest this Rift Skeleton. Not going to be able to... As Snake have a huge wave of minions heading towards this turret. The minion wasn't marked either. I was wondering why Swift was playing so aggressively. He will work topside. And we'll see how SF, SOFM rotates if he does it all. As this is... Yeah. So, like, the best thing about getting these boots for tank is that when you charge up your E, if you're in range, you'll probably stay in range. Because it's just a Doran's ring available for Dade, who is behind in every sense of the word. Yeah, he's just in a world of pain here in the mid lane and still doesn't have his flash, so SOFM can make his way back if he wants to. Flandre here, a lot of pressure alleviated on him at the same time because Swift have to, had to give up his position. But now we'll see whether he is going to move out. No, Sapling is going to be enough. One of the strengths of Maokai, of course, is you don't have to face check and be within damage range of Swift. You can just throw a Sapling out, see if he's there. If he isn't, then you can ward. Always going to be quite useful as even the Graves has gone for his Boots of Swiftness immediately. One of the cool things about the current patch is the experience gain with jungle items. You get full experience with just the machete. Yeah. And here he goes again. Yeah, all the way back in is Dade. The flash is forward. Dade's falling down one more time. The pull's out from Tank. And SOFM almost dies to the turret, but they aren't able to take down the chicken this time. Still forced out of lane one more time, and that's a 20 CS deficit. Yeah, they don't need to kill him. They can just pressure him. Very well timed from SOFM, and his pathing does seem quite strong already. The first time that we're seeing this jungler in the LPL. Well, Martin actually looking really good here at the same time. Jay-Z, not so much after throwing that Winter's Bite the wrong direction. Just getting his eye in. Nailed that part of the wall. And it's interesting how SOFM even got picked up into Snake. I'd be very curious to find out how. He was destroying the Korean server with high ping from memory. There's a couple of highlights on Reddit. Yeah. He's definitely a strong player. Vietnamese, I believe. Uh, looking to see what he can get done here. Already making things happen. Almost dying to a Gromp here at the same time. But we'll make it home. Calculated is what we'll say. Nailed it. Did they deny the cannon creep? That's the real question. But everything's starting off very smoothly here. The snake. The carry that we spoke of being tank. He's found himself quite far ahead in laning phase, and Dade naturally doesn't win laning phase, but this is pretty bad. All situations considered. I'll say for what it's worth, though, Nubi's bottom lane have diffused what was a 0-2 start reasonably effectively. And just kept it at about an 8 CS advantage here as well for the Lucian. So, really strong play. This tank just wanders at Dade and gets a disgusting amount of damage down. It takes it's close enough to half of his health and he wasn't even stacked up on that blood bank. Also, doesn't have any ability power built up. Vladimir. <laughs> it's going to get old one day, but right now I'm still just completely bamboozled by the champion. 
<laughs> Same thing with Echo, dude. And every time. Yep. With Echo can go full tank, and suddenly he's just taking all of your health bar. Yep, still dying, but look. Tank, forced to use the pool. I yeah. say, look. Uh, I mean, that. yeah, look at him turn into a pool and not take any damage. Yeah, so Swift was there to try and push that wave out and actually give Dade another opportunity to go back to base. The more effectively he can get his buys in, the better he may feel in this lane. Not that that's great. It's also going to force a Boots purchase out of him simply because Tank has rushed the Boots of his own and is closing that gap too efficiently to out-trade him every single damn time. Well, Flandre here as well, doing a whole bunch of work on the Maokai, actually out-trading... V here early on, who's grabbed himself a Phage, so not opting for the added wave clear of the Ravenous Hydra. Wants to get that Black Cleaver as quickly as possible. Early rush of cooldown reduction. Helps with team fighting and teleports if it comes down to it. Bit less sustain, however, as you mentioned. Not going to have that Hydra. Well, Swift going to make his way over. SOFM has found him. Swift will need to dance his <laughs> way back across. SOFM can't hit him because he's behind minions. They kind of just watched him help the blue buff, gave him a leash. No, now get it. Yep, no blue buff going to be going over to tank this time around as they now finding himself in a substantial position in the trading capacity. Still behind by a couple of creeps, so not too bad here for Flandre. But this slow start has like escalated themselves into a gold lead that's just going to be maintained. It's something that Snake will always do. And this time around, it's through a standard lane, not a lane swap. The Snake, they're actually doing well. They found something that feels somewhat similar to them as a team. Yeah, it's really working. But do they have to continue putting their foot on the pressure? Like, what is Newbie's game plan moving into what will be the mid game relatively soon? Well, Newbie just wants to scale. They've got a Civic Karma, so they're going to have to work around that bottom lane. The most likely outcome would be that V, when his teleport is back up available, will work with Swift and look bottom. At the moment, Tank's going to be uh, keeping Dade busy. So until further notice, unless Tank leaves, Dade won't. And that's where the real problem is going to be for Nubi. At the moment, they just need to use that Civic Karma and try and get something done. But no teleport available means they could be waiting a couple of minutes to get that at all. And Snake have windows where they can try and be proactive themselves. You can see SOFM actually just destroying the jungle of Swift. Having his way with it. The Mark is now under contestion here at the same time as SOFM is going to smite it away. But there's the ultimate out of Jay-Z. Culling flies through. As Martin doesn't find any damage. Swift. He's a cheeky devil, SOFM. He bleeds out every single thing that he can get for it. Every time. And now he's just coming mid. Yeah, just throw some pellets in there. Feeling okay. Giving the bro fist a tank. Yeah. Back into the jungle. Oh, right as they spawn. It might have just been the animation, to be fair, of them uh, coming out of their hole. That does happen. Would have been cooler. As Swift, you can see, he's going to settle for some Krugs on the other side of the map, just saying that, yes, SOFM, I understand. You have control. I'm just going to avoid you. And the cool thing about what SOFM's doing, though, whilst we're looking at these jungles, is he passed towards the winning side of the map, being Martin and Jay-Z, who just tried to fight more unhappy, forced to summon a spell out of the Karma, and health bars were missing, so you can see the recall is a response from Newbie's bottom lane. Well, you can see it's a recall in for Snake here at the same time after they've shoved that wave in. Happy going to make his way back. Does have a BF sword, so feeling quite strong. As that's the BF sword picked up by Martin, so looking to go for the Essence Reaver build here instead of what has been the standard Black Cleaver and Ghost Blade. Bit of a gank in the mid lane there as Flandre's battling V. Lots of damage trading between these two, but Flandre is still always getting the worst end of it. Does have probably the sustain advantage once that Corrupting Potion's gone, no, but SOFM's been Scepter. discovered. Lots of damage down from Swift and SOFM right now as Tank's going to make his way in. That's going to be the trade of the jungler for... Oh my god, Tank right underneath the turret is going to throw out the Q. That is so much damage. The double kill comes in. Jay-Z picks up aggro and Tank just walks out. Vladimir, everyone. Yep. Tank just says, thank you for the ride, Dade. I was planning on killing you, but now you've made this a lot easier to do anyway. Jay-Z, I will say the Braum very smartly takes that turret aggro to make sure that Vladimir lives. Nothing else mattered in the end of it. And a mistake. That was silly. On multiple fronts from Newbie. SOFM did go down. Swift, I don't even think, dropped his ultimate, though. He really wanted the kill before he pressed it. 
And so they kind of like greeted each other and they're just both dying. <laughs> it was a really weird series of events. It was very, very strange. However, it is Tank that reaps the benefits of it in its entirety, grabbing that double kill. And the proto belt. Yeah, dash cannon already in. Poor Tank on the Vlad. And we'll say it's probably the only one that makes sense at the moment, the proto belt. The GLP 800 just doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> oh, Gunblade. I'm okay with that one. If we're talking about Hex. Well, that items. item does not exist. Like, Gunblade's the best. What are you talking about? Oh, Moore actually caught out of position here. SOFM's going to pop over. Picks himself up a massive amount of damage. Plus the kill, of course. And we have to mention SOFM's positioning. He's always in the right place at the right time. They still have not looked towards the Drake. They should now, of course. But off the back of a pick, he is there when necessary. Newbie's bottom lane just looked completely out of sorts. And honestly, it feels like Swift against the world. Yeah, well, Swift, speaking of which, is actually going to continue counter jungling, but the dragon is most definitely going to fall, and it's an Ocean Drake at the same time, further empowering SOFM's ability to stay safe here in this game. Pool is down now from Tank, as Dade was looking for some more aggression. Swift makes his way in Proto Belt, helps create distance here for Tank. Yeah, can dash oh, himself to item. safety. And Tank kind of just chills out. He is a Tank Vladimir, after all. I didn't actually intend that. Yep. He's got his tanky items there, so it's going to be very hard to kill him between Swift and Dade, and it gives a lot of time for SOFM and the rest of Snake to get that Drake uncontested. And they're not done. Actually, SOFM is about to reveal them as the spectator shows us that ward. Yeah, Raptor Sense is going to spot that one out. He walks over, finds it. The rest of Snake wander over there as well. And we're you're going to see the pings. Look at him go. There's a possible dive here. There's Newbie's bottom lane are just going to back the hell away from this. Yeah, Swift isn't nearby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Happy's gone. There's just oh, a load more. Oh, that is so sad. The Winter's Bite is going to miss here as more does have a lot of movement speed. That was a bit unfortunate there from Martin, but he's going to survive. And they get the dive on the Karma that was a sitting duck. Shooting fish in a barrel, Rusty, is exactly what that was. Recall too slow, more happy does get himself out to safety. <laughs> As Swift is still on the wrong side oh, of the map. Oh no, Flandre pops himself over, flashes after oh, Swift wow. and picks up the kill. He just wasn't expecting it. He also got knocked up, so he wasn't able to pop down the ultimate. So timing from Flandre was there. And the flash in response just gifts over a kill lovingly to Snake's top laner, Maokai, who's just going to farm away still, as it didn't give him anything for laning phase. Yep, Flan uh, Dade is going to make his way away from Tank, gets to his inner turret, still not sure whether he's safe there, to be honest, with SOFM lurking in the wings. This Tank, this Snake team, just look completely different. Yeah, they're just so proactive. They're getting things done. And I do have to say, a lot of this is the jungler. Yeah. Stepping up to the plate. Tank, of course, being 2 0 1. Very handy. He's that carry for the team, though, that we expect at this stage. It's Flandre with that uh, red buff, huh? Yeah. How's that health regeneration? Smashing V over and over again. Doesn't have a repost. Flandre can just. He's about dive. to die, yeah. There's the arcane smash. Twisted advance? No. Twisted advance? Not Swift's here again. Okay, Repost is up now. Yeah, most certainly is. As Swift, he's going to make his way through. He's just not as strong as he wants to be right now on this Kindred. Flandre, however, has bitten off more than he can chew. And he's going to fall down. That Twisted Advance oh, has no. such a long cooldown, man. Tank's coming to dive. He is going to get spotted through Vision if he commits to this direction, though. He was probably better off looking at the turret. He's just going to go for V. Here we go. Yep, there's the Ghost. Swift is going to make Lamb's his way in. here. Yeah, the ultimate goes down. Lambs of Spite is in there, but do you want to be trapped in there with Tank? Looks like, yes, you do, as the Grand Challenge is going to be enough. The newbie, complete outplay. Yeah, massively. Just from Swift being there, actually very good awareness. They spot the Vladimir through the ward that they have in the bush. They utilize that to their advantage. And the pool being wasted, it was in an attempt to get the kill. So the Lambs of Spite came down at the right time, and they reveal their hand in a very nice counterplay. Well, of course, the tower did fall down in the mid lane, so Snake reaping the benefits of that. About 5,000 gold the lead here for the squad that haven't found a victory so far in the LPL. This is all about redemption. Even just in week number two, they just did not have a very good start yep. against Game Talents and EDG.
And even after that blunder, they are still that far ahead. And speaks volumes for how Snake have set themselves up in this early game. As we yep. move towards that mid-game strength, though, the Vladimir will start to become a little bit overwhelming. Braum will be enabling his team so positively. And Flandre already maxing out that Sunfire. They're going to just be a dangerous team-fighting team. They will dive. Everything. And this isn't what Flandre is used to as well. He's used to being put in a dumpster because he's in a lane swap and doesn't get any farm. However, this time around, even in farm with the Fiora, this Maokai is going to be so big. It's the funniest thing about Snake, isn't it? We've always said that they will lane swap, they'll put Flandre behind, and they'll compensate for 15 minutes until he's strong, yeah. and then they'll team fight. But he's always been one of the best standard laners in League of Legends. Yeah, precisely. As SOFM's going to pay a visit to the bottom lane, massive knock-up comes out of the Braum as Tank's going to find Happy. There's the pull, and he has to watch his death. Stolen by SOFM. Kudos there, Mr. Graves, as he grabs himself the Krugs at the same time. Tank no. going to eat up some health, and V is going to take down Flandre with the help of Swift towards the top side, but are they going to get two turrets for it? I highly doubt it. And Swift is essentially just fighting for the lane that is ahead. It is still the win condition of newbies to get that Fiora split pushing, get Flandre behind, but even without that Maokai impacting the rest of the map, they still have enough damage to get everything going. Tank able to roam around, something that he is quite exceptional on doing. Remember, he is a Lissandra player. Yeah. But still, Swift is making an attempt to win the game, not to withhold themselves from losing this game. They're not delaying a loss. They're actually just fighting fire with fire. Yeah, trying to get that split push happening. And look, we saw it work out for IG. They were falling behind against Game Talents. Still got that composition working out the way they wanted to. This is more of a 1-4. Well. Yeah, they've completely sacked the bottom lane of Newbie. Absolutely gone. They're going to give the Herald to Fiora as well, you would imagine. So from here, V is their only real redemption until late game happens. That's tough. Yeah, most certainly is. And we'll see whether he's going to be able to do that. He does have a lead in CS now. Has managed to take down the Maokai. And he's got his Hydra, so he's got the stain to keep himself up in a tank fight. Yeah. Nice spell shield does come out, but Jay-Z able to proc the concussive blows, the culling, rifling through Happy. One more auto attack will stun him up, and Piercing Light's going to finish it off, and this Sivir is having an awful time. Yeah, this is not a great time on the Rift for a newbie fan. Dade's oh, up next. Jay-Z does find himself the Winter's Bite onto Dade, but didn't really want too much more. They want the Mountain Drake. They don't want to fight for Red Buff, but they will steal it. Well, Mountain Drake is going to fall down. Dragon number two, now destroyed in favor of Snake. I believe, is that two mountain drakes that they've it already is. got? No, they have an ocean. Ah, uh, ocean That is mountain. going to be the second mountain coming up in six minutes. Yeah. So unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to be able to show you that uh, ocean drake that they do have. But that was the first one that they were able to pick up. Yeah, that's a bit weird. They definitely have one. And still FM's just disregarding Dade. <laughs> oh, just smoke screens the last raptor and he's just going to wander and as soon as he gets back into his jungle he's going to be full health yeah. thanks Ocean Drake and Red Buff absolutely yeah. so FM still sitting pretty but so is V at the moment he's not got a big lead to his name and you can see how Snake now need to start reacting to this accordingly and what they want to do is put their strength in the top lane put Martin up there and start breaking the base over there. Because if they get the turrets, the gold lead will stretch further. And Snake should be able to find themselves with an unreasonably large gold lead. And look towards actually closing out a map. Not to mention the global gold will really help out evening out that matchup between Flandre and V. Flandre already going pure armor here against the Fiora. Not going to be helping out so much with the fact that she does a lot of that percentage health damage with those uh, weak spots. As Swift has found Jay-Z. Winter's Bite not going to find... The Kindred. And the ultimate comes out, doesn't find anything either. Jay-Z, a little bit of a frustration play, perhaps. Yeah, they wanted to get their eye in, but it was going to be a risky thing to do. They still get the turret. Everything's still kind of rolling in Snake's direction. SOFM at the moment has been the closest thing, I think, that we have seen in the LPL to like a crash jungler from the LCK, which is just get ridiculously far ahead in farm and then use that to your advantage. Very greedy, but yep. because he can carry type of style and beat the heck out of you with it he's got three yeah. items now as well this guy is the highest the level on his team Between he's the highest level in the game 
Yep. Highest level in the <coughs> game has a lot of farm to his name in comparison to that of Swift. Oh, yeah. Make sure that he gets the kills. And this is Graves into Kindred. This is not a matchup that we normally say, oh, well, Graves is, of course, going to win this one. After, of course, he took some nerfs. I'd say it's a, it's a reasonably even matchup. Yep. Graves is okay because if you can pop the Lamb's Respite and Graves can ult as it finishes, it kind of compensates for the heal. But it's not the best matchup. You're not meant to be this far ahead. We'll, we'll see whether Swift can find his way back in. Just looks like Snake's plan for this game is working so far. However, V on the bottom side, able to answer. Grabs the second turret here for Newbie, but it's four down for Snake. He's got a lot more work to do. And they're looking at like near the barren area, honestly. Securing a Scuttle Crab just means that there's going to be the easier escape option if the Baron is started. Braum's quite a good natural tank, as is Vladimir, for his namesake. Oh, Grand Challenge goes down. Flandre puts his side to the wall here. Doesn't want to give V the opportunity to get all of his health back. And he's just standing there, just taking it. Not worried at all as the Flash comes forward. Oh my god, Martin! Picks up the kill. The Ignite's not going to do These nearly enough. These top laners, enough. though. Oh, Flutter is dead to the Gromp. The Gromp behind you. Just stop it. Don't die, you big old frog guy. Not going to happen. Okay, Flandre able to make it out safely. Nicely played as he flashed over the wall. Yeah, so he'll be able to save that bottom lane turret with his teleport, I would imagine, given V's current health and mana bar. But or he Snake... teleports into the top lane and they take an inhibitor. Yes, which is the other option. So I could hold on to that teleport. Remember, home guards are on as it's 23 minutes in. And Snake are just not stopping on the top side themselves. Oh, it's Dade. He's looking for the potential play. Gets a Rylai's auto attack in there. He's able to slow them down. On the hunt comes it. in. Swift really wants a fight. As Jay-Z will have to flash himself out. Does so. SOFM as well. He's going to be absolutely fine. So that is on the hunt popped. Few cooldowns, but Snake survive. They still want that Baron. They could all dash. So what they're going to do is they're going to all dash over the wall. That was the call. They actually pinged where the wards were. They're 100% committing to this. Blind from Newbie. Newbie will not expect a thing. And Jay-Z actually going down very low, of course. The spike's in the back of the pit just because they are putting their back to it. But they are going to be able to take this down. The power of the Mountain Drake most certainly there as the pool's going to come in. The ghost from Tank helping it keep him alive. By keep him alive, I mean he's totally fine. Had a dash cannon, just dashed himself out of the way a bit. Yeah, so they get themselves the Baron. And once again, now 9,000 gold in the lead. Snake, At 25 minutes. Snake looking above and beyond what we have seen from them so far this split. This is a brand new team with brand new players overperforming. Well, not brand new. I mean, Martin we've seen before. Yeah, well, okay, but so he's playing out of his mind. You're exactly right. This combination of we, players. It just shouldn't be like this. It's just beautiful out of Snake. You're exactly right. And you mentioned Identity Crisis. Well, obviously, you know, this week has been a big week for them. Because they have seem to have figured something out. Yeah. They definitely have. I guess, However, yeah. I guess whilst the they've got side. themselves, though, like this far ahead, and like we could look at this and praise them, and we absolutely will be. This is only game one of a best of three. Very true. So we know that Snake have been falling in the LPL. They definitely have been underperforming. This could just be the glimmer of hope. They have done this before. 1-1, one, one, then lost the series. Yeah, and there's also the fact that, you know, Newbie, not necessarily with momentum at their side after losing that series to Game Talents. They do have late game, however, as they are yeah. newbie. This is exactly right. It's going to be the big test, though, if they can make it work, because it's so close to 10,000 gold the lead. Double Mountain Drake is going to be in effect here from Snake. And look at this thing die. It's so quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back. That's a lot. Snake in the driver's seat. V, once again, probably the only win condition available to them. Dade's done nothing but get out traded and run away since the start of this game. And Swift has only been able to look at the uh, Fiora lane as an option. Nothing else exists on this map for Newbie. Nothing. And no one can go near Tank. He's just too big. Yeah. Three item Vladimir. As and a zone is when it comes to tank it. items, basically. Oh, God. Oh, get him. Yeah, Jay-Z possibly caught out, but look at the damage from Martin Swift. Manages to find the ult button as SOFM was standing in it, but they're just happy to wait this one out. Winter's Bite does connect with more as the Hemo Plate comes down onto Dade. 
Looking for more of a minion wave to follow this one through, but that's a lot of buttons now down from Newbie. It definitely is, and Snake still with that Baron buff in their back pocket should be able to look to put some damage here. Happy doesn't have the wave clear with the Sivir, and there's the teleport. Oh god, Happy just gets exploded, but does have the heal, does have a lot of shields there at the same time. They are going to take down this turret as V is able to make it in just in time, oh my but god. my god, Happy, not so much at this stage as this is an onslaught tank. So much damage, and Martin as well, right over the top with the burst. And Snake aren't game. stopping. Yeah, they might be able to just finish this one off. V, Swift, the only two members remaining. There's no way for them to defend this, and Snake just destroy Newbie. That was a completely commanding victory from this Snake roster. Not what we were used to saying out of this team, especially considering their first run, but SOFM joins. Martin back in. It's a transformation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very weird thing to see from Snake. Winning this quickly as well. Absolutely that, putting yeah. on a clinic. Just such decisive play across the board, which we have not ever associated with Snake. This is the team that wants to lane swap, take it very, very slowly, not play up in your face at all. 